Hello. Welcome to the Linux Planet YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at how stable is Linux for gaming, and is it really possible to actually game with Linux these days? Now, before we get any further into the video, I'd like to thank my channel members. These are Mislav and Von Garden. They get early access to videos such as this one right here, as well as a little badge next to the name for both video comments and live streams, and they get priority response to comments. Anyway, let's get into the video. Now, what we saw at the start was just me doing my usual, just turning my system on, getting it all ready and going. Now, is it actually possible? Is it? We know it's possible to some extent, but is it? How flexible are we with gaming on Linux? So. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to do open up a new tab, just do a quick do our usual, make sure that the system is fully up to date before doing anything. Would help if I enter the right password. Also got to figure out oh, that's why. I was wondering why is my keyboard not lighting up yet yeah, because I accidentally put it in the wrong mode. Nothing here. Cool. Give a quick neo fetch. CPU is running at a nice and cool forty two. And we've been up for about three hours so far. Because I've been doing other things before starting with this. So, I've got a Linux. In my case, it's Debian 12. Running the 6.1... Yeah, 6.1.0-15 uh, AMD 64 kernel. Uh, I could be running it more up to date, but I'm not in this case because it's just this just works. As we can see here, my graphics card is properly recognised because it is a... But it's a RTX 3060 12 gig no low hash rate card. It is also 32 gigs of RAM, and the CPU is a Ryzen 9 5950X with 16 cores, hyper threaded up to 32, and it is glorious. And oh, let's PCI. Just to... and just as a proof of, it is a GA 104. So let's. Get into having a look at things now. What so what sort of games do I run on my Linux system? Well, look at Steam, shall we? Now, what I have on my system will vary from yours because what's the likelihood we put we play the exact same games? Now, it would be so lovely, Factorio, not Factorio, Steam, if you opened in the right place. So we have got the steam library and all that jazz and these are the games i currently have installed on my linux system i would love if it just show okay so these are the games i have currently installed on my system they are factorio which is a linux native game that's own for is not linux native however it runs like it is same for jalopy same for rimworld i, I play i play a lot of rimworld as you may or may not know as we can see by the hours here. Uh, there is also, uh, again, Factorio. I don't know why that's in the VR category. I may have done something weird with that. I don't know. Uh, Tetris Effect Connected. Uh, this is not a Linux-supported game at all. However, it runs just fine. No issues at all, and it runs really well with the controller. Game Dev Tycoon, not a Linux native, but it runs as it is. It runs as it's like a, like a Linux native. Same for Just Cause 3. Uh, Open TTD is Linux native, if memory serves me correct. I love it anyway. Prison Architect is not, but it's a good game. Same for Zomboy, Project Zomboid, Sheltered, and This War of Mine. The majority of games that I run on Linux aren't actually Linux native games. But here's the thing, I don't have any issues. Because the effort that has gone in by Valve and open source developers in general have brought us to the point where we can start a game and just go, okay, let's let's get running, let's get going. Now, if I decide that I wanted to install something right quick, and uh, let's decide, we we decided that we wanted to install just a small game, as it were. 
as we can see, we've got scheduled updates. Uh, we've got, as we can see, uh, scheduled updates for Proton 6.3, at 9.0, and common reworks distributable. And that's because I have various different games that run using various different versions of Proton. Now, I live on the edge, and I run with Proton Experimental just because, and it runs fine. There are a few games that I have run into that don't work fine at all, uh, that don't work at all, no matter what version of Proton you're using. And one of them would be Cyberpunk. When I tried getting Cyberpunk to work, it did not want to work. Didn't want to know. Which is a shame, but there we go. Like, it's... It's a problem. We'll install the game, as we can see here. It's not supposed to run at all. And we'll do it from the start. So, properties, compatibility, force use, and then just leave it at Proton Experimental. Install, yep. And then we'll just watch it. The difference I, I, that I have found between Steam, uh, Linux and Steam Windows and Steam Mac OS, because I've used Steam on all three of them, is for some reason, entirely un unbeknownst to me, Steam on Linux has a higher maintained download speed. Where with Windows, it's just peaky up and down, peaky up and down, peaky up and down. Oops, sorry. Peak, constantly peaky up and down. It doesn't really want to work. It doesn't really try and peak out your networking interface or anything like that. But with Linux, if I say download a 70 gigabyte game, it will try and stay like that for as for high speed possible for as long as possible. Now, admittedly, somewhere there, there is a cache server or two somewhere in the Steam interface, uh, the uh, Valve infrastructure that make it go. Whoa. And by the way, if you haven't noticed, um, Valve released Steam. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Will this game work? Well, let's have a find out, shall we? I have done, as you can see here, I've done absolutely no adulteration, nothing at all. It is just straight on. And that will be the shaders pre-caching. And then, hopefully... Sorry about that, I forgot. I am just gonna turn this down for myself. There we go. But, instant. No hassle, no any of this. It's just straight up. In the in the door, punched it in. It's working. Now uh, we will just quickly click that, and that's fine, Hissy. But either way, it's the fact that you can just install a game and go. Thank you very much. Now, is this specific to only Linux? Well, to only Steam? No, it is not. We look at Heroic, which is opened on the wrong monitor because apparently my left hand side one is. Not brilliant. I have to quickly log into Epic, and I've got to remember my own bloody password for this one. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Is that it? Yes, it is good. Right. I've just got to quickly feed it an authenticator code. It's always, remember, folks, if you are not using two-factor authentication, what are you doing? Uh, trust me. You need the two-factor. I have made the mistake of not having two-factor and got myself locked out of things. Which is hilarious. But once we've logged in... You're right. It's a heroic launcher. You know how fast, that, you know how quick that was when we log in? It was like that. Practically, it, it, it was quicker. It took me more time to open up the phone, get to the authenticator, than I did to log in. Insanity. So, just to prove the point of downloading things on Linux is significantly better than downloading them on Windows. Detroit Become Human. It is a large game. As we can see here, uh, 48 gigabyte download size. It's not small by any comparison. And then we'll just watch this. Now, if you ask me, 
is that pretty good? The answer is, yeah, that's bloody good. Because if I open um, system monitor, there we go. That is downloading relatively fast. Again, Epic, uh, Epic Games download a bit slower anyway. But that's because that's how Epic is. But it's just constant, faster, more stable. And there's no issues at all. And this is why I love Linux. Like, yes, there are still games that I... There are games that I still play on, on Windows that I have to play on Windows. One of them, unfortunately, being Battlefield 4. Because, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, when running Battlefield 4 through Wine, it doesn't report my ping to game servers. Now, because it doesn't report my ping to servers, I get kicked from the servers because they go, you have no ping. But they'll only do that after, after an age, so I, 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 I don't know. Seems a bit strange. Now, it's installing just fine. No issues at all. We're already 16% of the way through. 17% of the way through. In the time it's taken me to pull, pull this up and tell you about that. But it's the fact that this stuff happens. I'm just going to cancel this because I don't, don't actually want to download this. Uh, because I, I've played Detroit Become Human. I'm all right. I don't want to, ca I don't want to carry on playing it. I don't want to play it again right now. But it's the fact that we're in such a place these days where Linux is an entirely viable option for jumping back and forth. I do, I dual boot. I'll admit that. I have both Windows and Linux on it, on on separate NVMe drives, direct on the motherboard. Well, one of them is directly connected to the uh, CPU. The other one is through a PCIe expansion card. But they both run as if they were connected directly to the motherboard, and that's fantastic. It's just glorious. So, back to the question. Is Linux actually gaming viable? Yes, in my opinion. It's like, I, I admit, I, my system is extremely overkill for gaming. But, it's really bloody good. It's fantastic. Anyway, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. They both seem to work, even though you can only see one of them. Remember, my kernels, when you use Linux, do not panic. I have been Nick. You have been amazing. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye.